My name is Christian Qualia, born and raised in Naples, um, where I was actually uh, raised for nine years in a very Italian style with a you know huge family, a lot of food, kids, screaming, love. Uh, but then my mom who's Swedish, that's why I'm so tall and blonde, uh, I guess had enough of the Neapolitan way of life, so we moved to Sweden. I feel lucky that I have both of these worlds. Brandstationen to me is um, like a toy store for us grown-up children. I want it to be seen like a playground for design and color. It's very important to me that um, it feels fun. I love to sell quality, that's why I have such a passion and love for vintage items, because there's just something about it. Even if it's worn and it has some dents or whatever, it still has a, like a weight to it. The production of um, the past is so much more sustainable and uh, great, I think. So I want people to uh, almost um, be overwhelmed by a vintage experience. Where I find my stuff is mostly abroad. Like I want to leave the Scandinavian style and Scandinavia in general and get into markets in France or get over to the UK. I love the UK. Uh, or just, you know, visit some dealers that I'm friends with in Sicily, in Italy, and just make my collection there. So it's a lot of work. But obviously it takes me abroad and I do love to be on the hunt, mm. like waking up in Belgium, not knowing what the end of the day is going to look like, if I've made any bargains or if I bought too expensive, whatever, because I fell in love, but oh, fuck it, you know, some items just speak to you and I always think it's better that I have them than that he has them or she has them. <laughs> so sometimes I buy well uh, and sometimes I might overpay, but hopefully not too much. I have a shower pillow. So, you know, how you randomly get something sometimes. Like, for instance, this um, is made by Tamar Morgendorf in New York and Brooklyn. Um, I'm a huge fan of her and I found her actually on Instagram and just fell in love with her design. It's a shell pillow. It's so beautiful. Uh, so I bought one and then asked if maybe she possibly would consider selling her pillows in my store. And she actually knew about my store and said yes. So um, I'm thrilled to have them. And I, you know, I'm not in the trade for the reason to buy cheap and sell expensive. I'm in the trade because I love items and I see something when I when I find them. Mm -hmm. I see them together in a setting or in, in a set design or they, they just speak to me, I guess. Uh, I can watch a chair that's, you know, bandwood chair, whatever, tonette, and just brings me into a bistro in my mind and conversations and wine and whatever. Mm -hmm. I get images and stories in my head by looking at things. So how do I do it without a driver's license? Eh? You don't? I do not drive. It's, um, it's definitely something I am um, looking into right now. Uh, but for the moment, I don't drive. So I have great friends and great colleagues around Europe that help me out. Uh, obviously, I buy them dinner and uh, nice wine uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, it's a joint forces with some wonderful people that I know around Europe. Uh, that I've been fortunate enough to meet and often just randomly but then uh, you know there's some friendship that's grown out of that and uh, we help each other out so basically it's early mornings uh, then the bigger the better because I'm a hoarder when it comes to buying uh, but again I, I also sell so that's a good thing uh, and then um, we hit the markets
that there's an element to what I do that, you know, the excitement, it thrills me. I think that gives me energy, which I then also try to pass on to, to my colleagues and in my stores. Like, the thing like, you never know. These are some of my favorite items in the store. Uh, they are called mushroom plants, and they are mouth blown in Venice on the island of Murano. Um, so you have this quality, immense quality and know-how behind it, but then it just looks so much fun. It's almost like a Tivoli or a candy or whatever. And I just love the combination of great craftsmanship and just fun. doesn't need to be too serious just because it's well made, right? To me, good art doesn't need to be expensive or you don't necessarily need to know who the artist behind it is. Obviously, it's a nice thing, but if you know, but even if you don't know, you should just love the piece itself and, and select it because you like it. So this is one of my favorite items that I bought on Gotland on a flea market there. And I have no idea who made it, but I'm just in love with uh, how the person painted it, the colors, and uh, just the whole experience of this piece of art. So uh, my vision for Brandstationen is to always be the colorful option. I think life should be colorful and fun. And that's the total experience that I want my customer to have when they come here to feel like, wow, uh, a colorful bomb. That's how I want, it. I want it to be. I love lamps. And I, 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 I don't think there's a price tag to a lamp. Like, I, I just need them in my life. To me, lights are everything. Like they are the piece of jewelry of the room. You can adjust the mood with them. They're beautiful, or they should be beautiful when they're switched off as well as when they're, when they're lit. And there's just something about lamps. I don't know, I'm, I'm definitely a lampaholic. I don't think there's a limit to how much a lamp can cost or how big it can be or whatever. Uh, it's just Space, maybe <laughs> yeah maybe that where you put it but uh, or maybe you should just you know buy a new place no maybe. but uh, I think it's uh, it's very important when I start a project I always start thinking light mm -hmm. and then around the lamps I create the actual environment mm -hmm. so they're the centerpiece of my business I love things but it's a constant love so sometimes I just need to let things go because I also know that in a few days time I'll fall in love with something else. So there's a good flow of love, loving things so I can let things go. It is part of life and it's part of my, how I think about things that you actually don't own things but you just take care of them for a while and then when you're done they should just be passed on to someone else. And then, you know, the things might become the centerpiece of their home instead. Vintage has such um, a ring to it, right? Yeah. Because um, I think the generations before us, they invested more in what they bought, mm -hmm. whether it was shoes or a coat or a nice sofa. Mm -hmm. It was an investment. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the same thinking that, well, I'm going to change this sofa in 10 years' time or whatever, or maybe two years' time or whatever mm -hmm. people might think. You bought it and you appreciated it. Yeah. And thanks to them, they're still in good shape today, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, that's a world where I want to be in, I guess. Mm -hmm.